JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for December the 8th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but two of the other major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained only versus GBP, while it traded virtually unchanged against the Euro. The greenback lost the most uh, ground versus the Canadian dollar, the Aussie and the Kiwi in that order. Now, the weakening of the US dollar and the strengthening of the risk-linked Looney, Aussie and Kiwi suggest uh, that uh, markets continued trading in a risk-on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major European and US indices were a sea of uh, green, gaining on average 2.28% 2 uh, each. The optimism, albeit somewhat softer, rolled over into the Asian session uh, today as well. Now, it seems that uh, worries over the Omicron uh, coronavirus uh, variant continue to ease after uh, the British drug maker GSK said that its uh, antibody-based COVID-19 therapy with US uh, partner um, VIR Biotechnology is effective against all mutations of uh, the Omicron variant. What's more, a South African study suggested that a booster dose of the Pfizer vaccine could help protect against the variant, even though the study showed that uh, the new strain can partially break the protection of two doses. The news came after a South African official said over the weekend that, um, that the symptoms of the Omicron variant were mild, with the US infectious uh, disease official Anthony Fauci sharing the same view. Now, more official evidence that the new strain is not as dangerous as initially thought increased the chances for the World Health, Health Organization to arrive to the same conclusion as well. And that's why we see investors increasing massively their risk uh, exposure. As of now, we, we, we switch uh, to positive as well, and we see the case for some equity indices to conquer fresh record highs. However, we remain reluctant to call for a long-lasting advance as new findings pointing to, uh, to more severe Omicron, o Omicron infections could result in stress and anxiety again, and thereby another round of uh, risk aversion. Now, as for today, the main event of the agenda may be the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. At its latest meeting, this bank unexpectedly ended its quantitative easing program, maintaining an optimistic stance. Data since then showed that Canada's labor market continued to improve in October and performed even better in November, with the economy adding much more jobs than the forecast suggested, and the unemployment rate sliding to 6% from 6.7%. Both the headline and core CPIs for October accelerated further above uh, the upper end of the Bank of Canada's target range of 1-3%, to while GDP data revealed that uh, the economy rebounded by much more than anticipated in the third quarter. All this data suggests that uh, the, Bank, the Bank of Canada could, uh, could maintain an upbeat uh, stance, allowing ex expectations uh, that the hike could be looming in upcoming months to stay elevated. However, it remains to be seen whether the new, coronavir the new coronavirus restrictions would affect policymakers' stance. We believe that uh, it is too early for them to switch to a more cautious uh, stance. They may prefer to wait uh, for upcoming data before they arrive to severe conclusions about uh, the impact of the coronavirus on uh, the domestic and global economies. For now, we expect them to stay optimistic, to stay optimistic, something that could support the loony at the time of uh, the release. 
Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, besides the Bank of Canada decision, the only other releases worth mentioning are the US jolts job openings for October and the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week. The jolts are expected to have declined slightly, while the Energy Information Administration forecast uh, points to a 1.705 million barrels decline, following a 0.910 million slide the week before. Now, as for the speakers, apart from Bank of Canada Governor Tiff uh, Macklem, who will speak at the press conference following his bank's uh, decision, we will also get to hear from ECB President Christine Lagarde, ECB Vice President Luis de Guindos, ECB Executive Board Member Isabel Schnabel, and ECB Supervisory Board Chair Andrea Enria. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.